recording contain intro parts and collective spaces feature overview. Other topics you can find in other recordings, so let's start from the intro. Uh, in, uh, in this recording and in all others, uh, you can get the feature overview uh, and you can read more about them in uh, docs.sdl.com uh, right after the release and in uh, community.sdl.com too. And so here are some overview on the platform support. Uh, so uh, the Trillion Docs 14 version is uh, fully supported now, and uh, uh, Trillion Docs 13 and and uh, Knowledge Center uh, 2016 uh, for now is in limit support, and Trillion Docs uh, 13. Uh, have a limit support so that ends uh, in July 2021 and Knowledge Center 2016 uh, will be on limit support till July 2020. And there are uh, uh, three Trillion Docs versions that uh, is retired now, so it's Live Content 2014, Live Content 2013 and Trisoft 2018 R2. And so some overview on the color code and banners that you can uh, see in uh, the bootcamp slides. So uh, we, uh, we mark a duplicate feature as orange one here and so, uh, when we make a decision uh, on removing feature from the uh, our at region docs, first of all, we deprecate it here so that uh, our user can um, will have a time to adopt their own process uh, and make needed tweaks here to work without this feature or without these tools. And obsolete, um, after the deprecation, uh, we um, uh, make uh, features obsolete here. So obsolete feature is uh, marked as red, uh, and that means that features are already removed. Also, in slides, uh, you can observe uh, banners. We have two types of them. First is uh, caution predictions here. This is this banner you can see in case if uh, current release contain a part of functionality and we already planned uh, uh, some continuation of it in the upcoming releases. Also, you can uh, see the banner same as 14 SP1. So we make um, some recap on the previous release to provide you the whole pictures and uh, complete use cases on fun functional blocks for 14 version. And so let's continue with a feature overview for collective spaces. Uh, first of all, we'll start with uh, general things so that suit as for draft space, as for review space, or so it's a collective spaces overview. And then go through the details on draft space, such as editing content, structure changes, document history, and search and replay things. And then switch to the, after short uh, break, switch to the review space. Uh, and we'll discuss content review, living and observe feedback, process annotations, and review translation. So let's start with collective spaces. Um, the main ideas of using draft space and review space, and together it's collective spaces, is putting authoring and reviewing power back in the hands of subject matter experts. And so subject matter uh, authors or reviewers is an expert in their domain area with no a lot of knowledge in uh, technical authoring. Uh, in product company, SME can be engineers, product manager. In other companies, uh, it can be academics, scientists, financial experts, uh, and others. So let's see uh, how the current uh, region uh, docs uh, collaboration uh, looks like uh, uh, with uh, uh, SME authors inside. So uh, when there are 
uh, someone initiates a request for a content update or create, so the publication captain gets this request and uh, prepares some document structure. After this, uh, he or she sends the email to technical writer uh, with uh, uh, some task descriptions uh, that this publication should be prepared. And uh, in such a way, author content uh, phase is started. Uh, after this, technical writer uh, make request to the SME author and uh, will get as a result some doc documents or TXT document with the content inside. After this, technical writer need to spend some time to make formatting and uh, import uh, the content into the Trinian Docs uh, central repository. After the uh, content created, uh, the review and flow is started, where technical writer once again um, get the PDF file of the source content. It can be by publishing uh, source content to the PDF and send it to the SME reviewer. A SME reviewer will back it with some comments inside, or comments can be included in, in the email. Technical writer make consolidation of such feedback, like in uh, Excel spreadsheets, and send it out to the SME author. SME author provides some additional feedback or, or to technical writer, probably uh, some content changes, and technical writer should once again to make formatting and importing it uh, to the central repository. And only after this, uh, we can say that source publication is ready. So, what we want to avoid uh, uh, or to completely remove here? So, we want to decrease this importing and formatting things. Also, we want uh, to avoid all these uh, uh, third-party uh, files and uh, like uh, uh, like uh, additional flows with uh, uh, Microsoft Word documents or uh, this uh, PDF sending back and forth here and Excel spreadsheets. So and that's why. We introduce uh, collective spaces, and so let's see how the, our new uh, flow is, looks like. So, in this case, uh, yeah, for sure, after the publication captain gets a request uh, on content update or creation, uh, he or she need to prepare some uh, structure for this publication, and after this, uh, via email or direct message, publication captain can send the link directly into draft space to the SME author directly. Yeah, and uh, the, uh, in this way, authoring content phase is started. And uh, technical writer for sure is also a uh, person that's needed in this process, but so, uh, for now it so, would be role more supporting and mentoring. And SME author, while uh, editing or creating the contents, uh, he or she made it so directly in central repository. And after finishing, a SME author or publication captain uh, can uh, directly send link to review space to the reviewer. And reviewer also work on the content and leaving the feedback directly to the source uh, source publication inside the central repository. And a semi author can easily see, observe the feedback that was received and react on it. And yeah, and so uh, we make a preparation of source publication much more easier. And uh, for sure, I want to emphasize that uh, publication captain and technical writer is a persona who still really wanted in the process of document creation, uh, because uh, they deal with uh, more power 
tools like Content Manager, where uh, translation can be managed, or where some reporting uh, can be created. Also, they have uh, more capabilities to deal with conditions, to set the uh, condition categories and values inside, and for sure, Publication Manager to make uh, uh, a much more structural changes uh, rather than collective spaces can do. So, and so some general uh, concepts uh, for the collective spaces. So, uh, here uh, in the uh, main menu you can see the SDLA logo and um, I want to emphasize that so, um, collective spaces as a draft space, as a review space, it's about the content here. So it's no layout and no skin support. So there are no options to set uh, the different logo, color code, or fonts here. And um, yeah, uh, the draft space or review space uh, uh, looks like a uh, words here, but uh, you need to, to uh, remember that uh, each document is a new topic here, so it, each separate page is a new topic. And um, online view, here's a couple words about it, so outline is fully loaded and all maps are loaded here and uh, provide an accurate scroll bars are related to the sc uh, scroll bar in the content area. And um, all shown titles are the actual title values from the reference, uh, reference topics. Also, here are uh, the XML attributes uh, um, holding the cursor and uh, are this uh, tab contains a sensible subset of attributes. And uh, in the property tab, so you can observe the CMS properties as it can be configured through metadata config XML. Your answer. In the screen, uh, you can uh, observe how the lazy loading uh, is working. So it's allow uh, us uh, to work with uh, publications that contain thousands of topics. So when a user navigates through the outline, content will load and uh, um, there are target content uh, would be loaded and uh, the uh, topics around it also would be loaded. And uh, while the user continues scrolling, the, the topics uh, that is much uh, far away from the target ones would be unloaded. So it's allowed to work with uh, huge publications. Um, your answer are uh, regarding the uh, user interface of the draft space and review space. So uh, uh, it's uh, uh, localized to English, German, Japanese, and Chinese. And uh, there are a list of browser uh, that uh, uh, collective spaces supported. It's a Chrome Edge as a Chromium one as the latest version on the oldest engine and Firefox. Uh, so, and so, um, our collective spaces is uh, disabled out of the box and can be enabled via relevant each deploy commands. So, deep link. Let's see how author and reviewer uh, interviewing process can be initiated. Uh, so, uh, publication uh, uh, captain. Uh, is a person who mainly work in a Publication Manager and a Content Manager. And so when the structure of the publication is prepared and Publication Captain need to send out a link to draft space uh, and review space to SME author and SME reviewer via email, um, it's for now can be easily do right from the Publication Manager or right from the Content Manager. 
And also we uh, think about the use case where SME author, right after preparing the content, want to send a direct link to review or for created content to a SME reviewer. So uh, such possibilities also uh, uh, we also have inside the draft space too. So let's see here, Publication Manager. As you see, there are new uh, menu and item in contextual menu was added. It's copy link 4. That's contain two separate options, so, uh, link for draft space and review space. Answer so, uh, a bit about this feature. Uh, the whole this feature can be uh, configured as enable or disable via each deploy. And uh, some uh, additional configuration like uh, the proper link to uh, collective spaces can be set as in the properties of accounts or in the client tools as via proper each deploy command letter. Uh, so, next way to get the link to our draft space and review space is uh, from our content manager. And as you can see, uh, when the publication is uh, uh, selected, uh, as we have there are two options like draft online and review online that can lead user to draft space and review space. Uh, and so inside the draft space in outline uh, in contextual menu, uh, there are also two options to get a link for draft space and review space. And all these ways to get the links uh, support and options to get a topic the link should focus the end user to. So in this case here you can see the two options so like copy link to draft space and review space for the opportunities topics. That means that uh, when the semi-author and reviewer will follow the link that they received from email, they would they will see their publication with focus on this particular topics, but for sure they will see the whole publication. So draft space. Yeah, so draft space is powerful, but easy authoring tool for subject matter experts. Uh, and so it uh, contain a um, relevant menu that uh, have a lot of editing options. And uh, uh, it's easy to start editing content. It's like word like where a user can just put the cursor inside their uh, content area and start typing. Also, it includes the IME options here. Uh, there are there are an options to create a new version of the document in case if uh, the document was finalized before, so it have a released status. And uh, we provide op uh, also a list of capabilities to work with content reuse, such as counters, forums, and conditions, and uh, uh, move the documents through the workflow changes by changing the status. And on a uh, side uh uh, sidebar, you can see the different tabs. Each tab contains their uh, own um, options and functionality. So, first one is the outline that's including a, a quick navigation and it, uh, it's more functional rather uh, than a regular table of content. And so then there are an XML attributes and uh, properties tab that provides uh, to user options so to change the XML attributes and to manage and deal with SMEs properties. Uh, and uh, um, in uh, 14SP2 uh, was added a read-only XML source. So in case if uh, our user wanted to check for uh, the definitely the element that's used inside the source content, it's possible now. 
and search options with uh, uh, serial or place also available here. So let's go through all the things uh, in a bit, uh, with a bit details. So editing content. Um, user, um, yeah. Um, in case if a topic or map was uh, finalized before, and that just means that uh, the previous uh, version of it was marked as finished and uh, uh, gets uh, the released status, it's possible for user to create a new version. So the button create new versions would appear on the top of the documents, and uh, creating new versions uh, would uh, uh, update the baseline as well, and uh, only one constraint uh, is, uh, and this constraint is the similar as uh, for uh, publication manager as for um, uh, other XML editors that uh, user can't create a new version in case if the whole publication uh, released. And so after the, uh, pressing the button, uh, create a new button, the pop-up with the properties is appeared. And there are no options to configure to show or not to show these properties to the user. So customers can't decide so should they show it or no. Uh, the more details on show mode, uh, I will provide you in a configurable sections of the bootcamp 14 SP2. Next step, so user already start to uh, make editing inside the content, uh, uh, create the new versions and start typing the changes. So uh, after this, uh, user should uh, save or discard the changes. And we provide uh, two options uh, to make this as on each topic level, as uh, for the whole publication. So it's possible to save or undo as changes in topic, as uh, uh, save all unsaved for now topics as uh, to discard all changes that was made for the topics and was not saved before. And it's still a um, yeah, single source here, so uh, this means that uh, the topic is stored in a central repository, so when users start editing, it's equal to checked out operations, and so uh, when user press undo is equal to undo checkout, and save is equal to checked in options. And so uh, undo uh, work only for content changes, so it works exactly as XMetal do. Uh, also, the inline editing curve for IME available here, and it's tested for languages, for such languages as Korean, Chinese, and Japanese. And in case if a user I need not only to insert the new content or text, it's possible to insert a new or existing from repository image. Uh, and so this option is under feature toggle, so customer also can uh, uh, define um, it's, uh, should uh, the user have this uh, feature inside the draft space or no. And when user upload a new image, um, how system should treat it? Uh, how is oh yeah um, as exactly um, what resolutions uh, should be set for such image can be also be configured inside configuration, and default value is uh, to uh, treat uploaded image as a preview one. And uh, are the same with our language, so defo uh, yeah, default uh, uh, language is a working language of publication. Yeah, here you can see the uh, pop-up that user can see when trying to insert an image. So 
Um, yeah, and uh, here I want to present you a bit uh, more advanced offering inside the draft space. So I'm talking about the content reused and uh, first I want to highlight the conrefs. Yeah, so for now it's uh, when the content contains a conref, user can see it and content inside the conref, and it's possible to insert it, remove or replace the conref. And for sure, we not provide the options to edit the content inside the conref. Yeah, for this purpose, user should go to the source document, which contain this uh, like conrefs here and edit it. And content reuse, so the next thing in content reuse is uh, conditions. So for now we show all conditional content. Uh, we use uh, color coding, so it's easy to understand um, uh, what condition is on or off this particular publication. Uh, and so it's not only the color coding, but also you can uh, see the icons that show what the condition is on or off. And in 14SP2, there are new options on simple changing the condition or editing the condition was also providing. So uh, for now it's uh, only typing inside uh, the attributes tab. So uh, that is means that uh, no list of available conditions, so it's only free text field and uh, no any validation. Next thing is uh, in a content reuse is a varrefs. And so for now they're shown similar to publication manager. And so with options so to uh, remove the varrefs or to edit it, it's, and it's also the a free text editing. And but so for now, no option to insert a new varref. And so user also can observe the source file, uh, like uh, of your original library of um, uh, variables, and relevant errors in case if something go wrong is also presented to user. Uh, yeah, after the content uh, is changed, the semi-author uh, can consider that his work is done and uh, uh, push the document for the next uh, uh, workflow stage, and that is means that uh, options to change the document status is available. And so let's move for structure changes. So outline, um, it's, a, a, uh, it's a representation of the map uh, and so outline for now is uh, collapsed from the start so when user is opening it um, and um, uh, it's a, a more functional rather than a simple table of content because it's provide an options to insert new or existing document to reorder them to remove topics inside it and also to sh show document history as well as provide a, a deep link to draft space or review space for each topic. Uh, yeah, and so under per each topic, I mean that we focus on this topic because all links to draft space or review space will lead user to the whole publication. And also the new options was provided in 14 speed to release. It's a quick navigation in outline, so it's easy to, in case if um, outline contain a long list of topics, it's easy for now to find it, but start typing uh, as relevant words, and it's also possible to get the quick nav navigation by uh, sh uh, hot case control G. And also the things that are worth to mention here is that uh, in case if user want to remove the topics uh, from the maps, uh, from this outline, 
uh, remove does it mean uh, deleting this topic from the repository or from the baseline? For such operation, some uh, power user and power tool still need it. Yeah, and here you can see how the quicker navigation is looks like. So here and so um, uh, first and some probably most common structural changes is uh, insert a topic and it's possible to insert new and existing from repository one and uh, as you see there are two places inside the interface where this option is available so from the menus and from the outline uh, answer XML source tab presented here, it's uh, read-only, so uh, it, serves, you, it can help user to observe the XML structure, but no more. Uh, XML attributes and CMS properties, so here uh, we provide uh, a sensible subset of uh, attributes here and uh, uh, CMS uh, properties that's configured and metadata config XML. Um, also, draft space contains a common tab here, so uh, collective space is good for collaboration because uh, it's easier for a SME author and a SME reviewer to collaborate with each other, so the comments or suggestions that the reviewer will, uh, will leave uh, in a review space uh, would appear in draft space as well and as the author can easily uh, work with them or react on them. Uh, and so this comment uh, uh, tab contains most capabilities from review space. And for more details on feedback flow, I will provide you in the relevant sections in review space. And some uh, search and uh, replace options. So it's available in draft space uh, and search options also available in review space. It contains the uh, content search and options to make a scope search when the user can uh, choose what's, uh, uh, in what topic he or she want to make the search and uh, symbol, single replace one by one uh, with respect of the workflow and this is means that so to make the replace it's needed uh, uh, to, um, it's needed as its uh, topic should be in draft status. Yes, yeah? so in case if uh, the topic is released, it's not possible to make the, the replace here. Yeah? So user need to prepare the content at first and then go through it uh, operation. And here, here you can see the uh, scope search screenshots here and replace options with uh, some prediction how the content would look like in case of replace. So Jeff space um, document history uh, it uh, it's allow us uh, to answer on the questions uh, who changed what and when within the topic version. And so the current history is on topic level and it's uh, comparing changes in frame of one version. Yeah, so it's comparing the revisions in, in frame of one version. Uh, the document history is now available only for draft space and it's uh, two ways uh, to open it. So one is uh, from a uh, contextual menu in outline and second by using the hotkeys. Uh, and so document history is uh, disabled by default and can be enabled or disabled with each deploy script. Uh, and so it's uh, based uh, uh, on Fanta Delta XML service uh, and so some peculiarities it's uh, up and triggering a uh, document history and saved uh, documents are saved automatically. 
point. So here you can see how uh, after uh, the pressing yeah, the, bat, uh, the button to show document history or pressing the hotkey, uh, user will see this uh, timeline uh, where the all revision framework for one uh, version is presented and the latest uh, uh, revision is always student. So the user can choose the range from the um, uh, from uh, previous uh, revision to the current one, yeah, and so, uh, this, so the user can choose what range he or she need to observe. After the pressing the view changes, or, uh, content with a card with the changes would be presented and the document history can be shown as for topic and here you can observe uh, that document that content that was deleted mark as deleted and uh, uh, inserted content is uh, uh, underlined as a green one and also some grouping uh, and collapsing things on in case if uh, different actions uh, was made in, on the same content. And there are options to jump right inside the draft space in this particular place to start editing. But I want to emphasize that it's, it's a several mode, uh, it's a, no, sorry, it's a separate mode uh, inside the draft space so that's when user press this button. This document history window will close and uh, document and draft space will be opened. And so uh, document history for map view contain uh, a bit more information so it's possible to see what the link was added or removed uh, from the map. And search and replace. So uh, search in uh, draft space and review space uh, uh, have two phases. Our uh, first phase is um, uh, CM research. Uh, as um, not all documents loaded because of uh, lazy loading, uh, we expect a full text search in CM first to limit amount of the documents. After the stage is finished, uh, CM uh, will provide the final uh, data to the uh, draft space. And draft space uh, uh, make the search uh, inside the received topics from the CM and inside the all loaded topics uh, and will show the final results. Uh, there are some uh, limitations from uh, CM search, so we make uh, exact matches. Uh, so, in case uh, uh, if um, uh, content, uh, in case if content contains a uh, hello world phrase, uh, yeah, it's possible to find uh, find it only in case if hello world is typed. In case if uh, hello world uh, is uh, typed inside search, as the search will return no, um, zero results. And the same search uh, skips some punctuations. Uh, so, and um, there are technical details that uh, uh, get in context uh, uh, document call was improved. And for now, this endpoint uh, returns the metadata for all topics, so we know about the language card ID uh, for search purpose. And for now, it's a demo time for the draft space. So let's refresh it just in case. So here we can observe the 
rough space and in frame of this demo I would show you the features that was added in Fortune as patrolly. So I want to highlight the features from Fortune or Fortune SP1 version. So let's start from the outline view. You can see that for now outline is collapsed here. And so here the new option is available, quick navigation. And so let's try to find uh, addressing competitor topic. Yeah, here I find it. So and it's easy to jump to it. Yeah, and um, as we can see, that's uh, here. Um, this topic contains the two conditions here, and so one of them is on and second off. Oh, well, let's see what I can do with it. So, as uh, uh, you can observe in attributes tabs, uh, uh, the condition fields uh, looks like. Uh, uh, available for editing and I want to change the region from US to EU. In this case the condition is changed but uh, to see uh, these changes, uh, the content should be refreshed and I can refresh it uh, as uh, well, I can as force this refreshment uh, as uh, to wait uh, for uh, refreshing periods and for now it's 10 minutes and the conditions uh, would changed. So for now let's make a force refresh. And here we go. So we see that the condition is changed to you, and for now it's green one. Um, and what's else? So let's see. Uh, let's see how searches work. Uh, so let me find topics that contain the phrase time to market. to markets, press enter and search is started. So here we can observe the two results. So two topics contain a time to market phrase. Um, and so let's place with replace. So in case if I want to replace type time to market with time to value. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Time to value. Yeah, so uh, here we can see the prediction how it would look like here but uh, as you see the first results it's not possible to make this placement and the reason why I, I can't do this is as a pain point topic is released so if I want to uh, to make this replacements I need to uh, create a new version first but in case of the second results here so okay messages it's available to make replace so I make replace and great so here let's go to the game messages topic again yeah so replacement was made here and I need to save them or I can make it on the whole publication level in case if I don't want to go topic one by one uh, and um, uh, here for key messages I want to show you how the document histories work. So I, uh, I go to the outline view 
uh, context all menu and here you can find show changes items. So let's press on it and here we can see the different revisions that was created in frame of this version of the topics and I can choose every range I need. Okay, let it be, let it be the all revisions and press the view changes. Uh, so yeah, here we can see that what content was deleted, what content was inserted again, and what uh, what changes here. So and uh, each change is presented as uh, separate cards and grouped in case if several changes was made into the same content. And uh, in case if I want to continue to make editing with uh, some piece of this content, I should press edit here. And as you see, we back to the draft space. And so this bullet list is highlighted so I can work, continue work with it. And next things, let's move to the comments pane. And um, here uh, we can see the suggestions here where the, this uh, item should be changed. And in case if I don't want uh, to retype all these changes, I can press the copy suggestion button and just insert it by Control V. So as you see, and trends reports and trans reports of suggestions contain the things, new things, and for now I can easily save it. Okay, uh, so and your XML tab, XML tabs just to, to reflect on um, XML structure of the topic that user can see in the content area. And it's really easier to see uh, and uh, to observe what XML structures use for power users. Okay, uh, what else? Let's see on the, our pitch topic. And here, here presented the varref. So, this is that varref here. And so I, oh, come on. Okay, and I can uh, see the uh, source library with these variables. As in case if I want to edit it, it's still uh, just a free text field, but nevertheless, I can change the variable. And as you see, the variable also have changed. And I want to change, uh, to save my changes. Okay, so it looks like that's it from the demo. And so with this demo, we end in the draft space sections. And for now, it's time for a short break. And we will continue with the review space in a moment. Okay, so let's continue with the review space now. So review space is for improved user experience, um, and from it contains uh, suggest, uh, suggestions for the content. So not only the pure comments, and so a deep link is available for easy sharing. Uh, the, what content should be to review between the SME author and SME reviewer, or publication captain and SME reviewer. And so it's uh, easy to classify the feedback because uh, our annotations contain the options uh, to choose the types as well as uh, it's possible to classify the different type of result resolutions. And um, we provide a public API for reporting purposes, uh, so it's possible to show the uh, 
Uh, what uh, notations we have for and frame of the publications uh, and which statuses they have? And um, uh, by lazy loading, it's uh, possible to deal even with the huge publications to leave comments uh, to them and protest it. Uh, so let's see here how the review spaces looks like. Uh, so, it's quite an uh, uh, intuitive interface uh, for feedback and uh, approval. It's uh, web-based uh, and uh, it can be used by anyone who needs to review the content, uh, to review, uh, the content and to uh, leave their uh, feedback. Uh, so, uh, here on the uh, menu level, we can see the options to navigate uh, uh, between the topics that are ready to review. In the content area, it's uh, possible to leave uh, comment and suggestions and leave comments not only to the pure text, but also uh, to the whole publication and to some elements like images uh, Congress, uh, and uh, it's uh, clear uh, to observe the processing status of the feedback by the statuses of the annotations, and uh, it's also an option to push the documents through the workflow to, uh, by changing its status. And um, as a right side panel uh, in Fortinus P2 also a bit changed, so he here you can observe several tabs, so for now it looks uh, more similar to a graph space. First one is the outline, including the quick navigation. A uh, second tab is the main tab for review space, the commenting one, uh, and the search option is also available here. Uh, so, let's make a um, um, short recap. So, uh, how user can get the link to the review space? So, it's possible to get it in a content manager, also link to review space, so it's possible to get in a publication manager, and so right from the draft space, it's also possible to get it. Uh, and um, annotation remapping. So, a uh, key point for this diagram and this process is to keep track on annotations in frame of publication version, regardless how many topics, maps, uh, versions was created. So, when you Every time uh, when user creates uh, a new revision in any tool, so not only in draft space, but also possible in other Fusion Docs tool, annotation rebase to a new revision, so user can see them in the topic of the latest revision. For sure, I want to emphasize once again that it works in frame one of one publication version. When the publication version is changed from one to two, the all annotations that was created for publication version one will disappear. Uh, and so also want to emphasize here that um, um, even taking into account that annotation will be rebased for a newer revision of the topic, the original version of topic can be calculated by using revision ID from the target to calculate up to original topic version. Oh, and let's see uh, uh, how user can choose the topic that is ready to review. So, uh, the first options, uh, that's available in review space only, it's allowed to uh, jump between documents that need to be reviewed. Uh, and uh, by pressing this next and uh, previous button that you can see on the screenshot. 
Uh, so, uh, customers can configure by them all on what statuses should be recognized by a system as ready to review. And it can be as one as a several statuses here. And so status are used in status uh, uh, is, uh, yeah, in uh, setting area status to be review inside of uh, uh, list of values status definition of oh sorry inside of uh, CM uh, properties of collective spaces uh, here and the settings can't be deleted from list of values status definitions. Uh, and in case if there are nothing uh, to review, uh, the next and previous buttons uh, would be disabled. It looks like they're a bit grayed out. And here you can see how the settings looks like. So once again, inside the CM settings, XML collective spaces settings, uh, here a structure also based on the element name. It's possible to configure uh, the statuses that should be rec uh, recognized by a system as uh, ready to review topics. So here presented status to be reviewed and uh, for example it says status to be legally reviewed because uh, our, a lot of our customers have a, a separate uh, levels of review. And so so um, outline uh, here it's also contain uh, some um, additional functionality so it's uh, not only to show the document structure but also an options to easily to jump for a particular topics here by quick navigation and it works as uh, similar as like in draft space. Um, here and uh, the same uh, for the search here, so search inside content and uh, with the same limitation because it's the same feature it's, uh, and uh, the same engine. Uh, only the one thing I want to emphasize that there are no replacing review space because review space it's not about the editing review space it's only about the uh, commenting and uh, leaving the feedback and react on it. So the, after the user um, picked up the proper topic uh, to be reviewed, so let's see how a user can leave the feedback. Uh, so a user can uh, leave a comment and suggestions on the texture by inserting the proper piece of it and uh, user can uh, choose what's, how to classify uh, this feedback here. So the different types available out of the box we propose editorial, general and technical ones, but it can be easily configured uh, in the CM settings by the customers. Uh, and after creation, uh, the annotation become unshared. Uh, and so I am add a bit more details on uh, statuses later on. And for now, let's see on what objects user can leave uh, other comments. So except uh, for a regular piece of text, a user can uh, leave their comments on the whole publication level as on the first screenshots. As user can leave uh, their comments for image, conref, varref and hazard sim symbol and gloss symbol. After the feedback uh, was left, uh, the user can easily observe it in the comment tab and it so uh, would be visible as uh, inside uh, the draft space as inside uh, the review space and the feedback grouped uh, uh, for topics and also orphan annotations for deleted piece of content presented and uh, about orphan annotations uh, indicate uh, this icon on the top of the topic. And by default in the comment tab 
shown on result annotations. It's on default values of the filters. And so, as we already touched uh, the filtering options, so let's see uh, what the other options to filter out the annotations is available. So, user uh, can uh, s filter out annotations for resolutions and for resolutions types in case if result resolution is chosen by different types of annotations by creator and creation date. Uh, and so, uh, as you see uh, in the results, the text is uh, of active filter is presented and for user it's easily to um, delete this filter just uh, uh, by pressing on the uh, cross icon. So we need now open the filter once again to delete the filtering options. Um, and so, uh, I want to add a couple words about the showing the annotation in the right place. Uh, so, here we introduce the position recovery on annotations. It's allowed to show annotation in the right place and rec recalculate the proper position when content was changed in other tools like Publication Manager or, or uh, XML editors. Uh, so, uh, it uh, covers such cases uh, like um, uh, create a, a new revision of topic or map uh, with or without content changes and covers the cases when the content uh, changed as before, as after annotated text and uh, the case where the annotated text is changed is covered also and also uh, covered case when the element with annotated text is wrapped or unwrapped with other elements or other block elements was inside before or after the block elements where annotated text is left. And um, uh, for sure to uh, also uh, additional options uh, uh, for position recovery that allow user to observe the original text when uh, the annotation was left is a view original options so that you can see on each annotation card. And after the annotation is left, it's time to start processing them. And first way to process annotation is to start collaboration for them. So, uh, and so the reply is the main mechanism uh, for make such collaboration here. So, we provide a one level of replies and in case if more than uh, three, uh, uh, more than three replies is presented, the middle part uh, of it is collapsed. Um, here, and so, uh, replies longer than three lines is truncate. Um, Garen's uh, replies, it's quite similar to the annotations here and uh, some uh, some similar actions is available for them like create, edit and delete. Uh, but uh, uh, they leave with the original annotation card uh, so, the status of the annotations is the same for parent card and for the reply. Uh, so, and the options to react on feedback is to adopt proposed changes and I have shown it in frame of draft space demo. So, in case if um, suggestion contain a uh, a long, uh, big uh, content changes. It's easy for a user just to press the copy button and copy the suggested text and easily to insert it inside the content by control V operation. Uh, so, and uh, if uh, we are talking about the process annotation, so a couple of words on them. It's uh, what we can do with annotation here. Yeah? So, like just regular actions like edit and delete. Um, and so 
Uh, right. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, right after the annotation is created, it uh, uh, have an unshared status. So that is means that the annotation um, is uh, don't uh, don't uh, show to uh, to other users. Uh, and uh, when uh, the reviewer or author consider that the feedback is complete. And it's time to spread it out and share with other members of this feedback loop. The user can move it to the next status, so it's possible. Uh, so it's on user choice when to make annotation visible to others. Um, appearance, uh, uh, also, when uh, the annotation is processed and the users consider that uh, other work on uh, this annotation is finished, so the user can easily resolve it and uh, choose other uh, resolving resolution here yeah? because not uh, all uh, changes that uh, annotation contain uh, will be always adopted inside the content. So user can choose to, uh, from proposed by us out of the box uh, uh, resolution types like apply it, not change and other. But also customers can configure their own list uh, for uh, resolving uh, resolution types. And so when the document is fully reviewed and all col collaboration cycles is finished, um, reviewer or publication captain can easily to go to push, uh, or as me also, can easily push uh, the document uh, through the workflow by changing the status. For example, from to be reviewed to reviewed. And so we are a bit already touched uh, as our workflow statuses. So uh, let's recap it again. Uh, when user create an annotation, it's uh, become an unshared. And that is means that unshared annotation is visible only for initial author or admin. And so annotation in unshared status can be edited or deleted, but there are no full collaboration options like reply, and there are no options to resolve unshared annotation. So unshared, it's like a draft for creator, yeah? and so after the user um, finished with preparing annotations and uh, want to share them with uh, others, uh, the user press the share button and uh, status of an annotations is changed to shared. And here the full power of uh, collaboration become available. So the annotation is, is visible for other users in the process here and uh, the annotation can be resolved. Uh, and such an annotation and shared status still can be edited uh, or deleted. Uh, and uh, replies here become available. And so as the last uh, step in uh, annotation lifecycle is resolved. Uh, when, uh, when users finish processing annotation, uh, he or she can resolve it by uh, choosing the relevant uh, status of the resolutions to indicate in which manner or how this annotation was processed. And uh, right uh, before the annotation become resolved, uh, annotation not available for editing anymore or not available for deleting, as well as there are no options to leave a replies. And for sure, this rest the restrictions is work for regular user and admin, as always, have elevated rights. So here you can see the Actions and um, actions and uh, roles mapping for annotation and different statuses. Uh, so as you can observe, that admin have really elevated rights and uh, can uh, pretend uh, 
all actions for all annotation statuses. Uh, the creator of annotations also have a wide right and uh, uh, can do show, edit and delete uh, for unshared and shared annotations. Uh, but for result one, it's uh, creator also have reduced rights, so there are no options to edit or delete it. And another user uh, have the less rights here, so uh, he or she had, uh, have, uh, can only um, see such annotations and uh, they can uh, only see the shared or result one because, as I mentioned before, on shared status it's for creator only, it's like a draft. And the same uh, mapping for replies. And so here you can also see that admin server uh, can do uh, all actions for uh, replies with annotations in all statuses. Uh, creator also have uh, um, a lot of rights uh, for replies uh, uh, for annotations that's in unshared and shared statuses, but there are no options for creator and another users to add, edit or delete reply for result annotations. And so here I want to emphasize that in case if user want to delete the annotations, the so all replies should be deleted first. And it's time for review translations. So, uh, you all, oh, let's back to the diagram that's with, uh, from which we start our uh, current session. So, after the source publication is ready, the translation stage has started. So, source publication is uh, sent out uh, uh, for the translations. And so when translations is done, they back to the central repository. After the translations is received, publication captain or other responsible person start the review translation cycle. And so uh, this means that publication captains uh, uh, sent uh, to translation reviewer email uh, with a link to review translation and translation review can leave the feedbacks right inside the central repository for the publication in particular language. And here I want to emphasize that annotations stick to the publication version and language they was left for. So, for example, if a, a publication have an English source language and was translated to uh, German and French and uh, translator reviewer left annotation to the French, public, uh, the French publication, uh, the, these annotations won't be available for the publication in source English language or in German one. So let's see how to get the link to review translation. Uh, so uh, for now, uh, in TM, by pressing review online, the pop-up with list of languages is available and user can choose our review space, review translations for which languages they want uh, to receive. And here are a couple of words uh, what language is presented in that list. So possible languages is requested languages, working language, of publication, plus all XML translation settings language, uh, past two languages. So all this XML translation, all languages as uh, it's included in XML translation settings. And so uh, for now, working language uh, selected as default. And so in case uh, if uh, any object inside publication in language other than uh, 
working one. The, uh, the fallback language mechanism uh, is start working and will show to the user such object on a working language. Okay, so it's time for the review space demo. Okay, so for now we already have opened our draft space and um, let's get a link to review space. So here I am using deep link from the draft space, copy link to review space. And, oh, come on. And open a new tab and just paste the link. So here you can see that our um, sidebar is changed here. For now it also contains the outline like draft space have. And so first one is a outline view, your comments still are main uh, top of for the review space and the search tab. So let's start how user can find the uh, topic that is ready for review to start their work. So we have the next and previous button and let's see. Okay, I jump to the opportunities topic and status to be reviewed. And next one, your target market and key audience also in status to be reviewed. So yeah, for now in this environment only to be reviewed. So only one step fingered and I can and only two topics uh, uh, in relevant status, so I can easily jump between them. And so, um, in outline, the quick navigation is also available. So, like, okay, your messages, for example, and I also can easily jump to it, and as you see, how the lazy loading working, uh, working, so yeah, it's also start to load one topic, and then other also loaded. And so, um, here, for example, uh, if I want to uh, find some topics by a relevant phrase or word, I can search for it. and also observe all results and easy to jump between them. So, and what objects I can leave the comments? Let's go to the main tab here, it's a comment one. And here you can see uh, the button at global comment. And Let's tap it, let's consider that the general one, save. Okay, and for now the comment on the publication level is available. Here, so, um, mm -hmm. let's jump to the elevator pitch topic. Elevator. Okay, so and here we have uh, variables, or ref, yes, yeah, so, and for now it's possible uh, to leave a comment on it, so I click on var ref, it's become inserted, and I can leave a comment. Okay, so after the user is a, leaves a comment, uh, sometimes so the user need to see uh, was his or her comments was processed and now or just how in other cases uh, to filter out uh, the comments. So let's see the filters um, here and so here. Let's. Uh, um, 
Let's see on the case when I, as a user, left some comment and want to see uh, what's uh, some replies uh, left to it or probably some of my comments was processed. So, so just of all I want to use um, to choose on result one. Uh, I prefer, would prefer to have all types and I want to choose myself as a creator and okay, probably let it be a general. Okay, set filters. Okay, so here I can see the all comments or all annotations that was left by me and let's have a general type. And in case if I want to, uh, to keep filter uh, all created by me annotation, but uh, clear the general type filter so it's easy to press on it. Error here I can see the at least technical comments here and I can see that some uh, reply was left to it. And the last thing is uh, how to get the review translation link. So I have a publication with a lot of languages and here I press on the review online button and it's possible to observe the list of all available languages and let me choose the German one, okay. And here I will get the German publication, but uh, sorry, it's a testing thing, so you, here you can see the publication is still an English one because of fallback mechanism. Uh, yeah, but here you can see that the uh, language code is used right one, is a German. So, yeah, that's uh, all about our review space demo. So, thank you for listening to this session. And it was recording about Collective Spaces feature review for the Trillion Docs 14 SP2 bootcamp session. And see you in other bootcamp recordings. Thank you.